All right, how's it going, everyone? Before I begin this video, I like to say, hope you guys had a fantastic new year. Um, hope you guys had a ha fantastic holidays. I'm slowly recovering myself from my holiday. Um, had this a little bit of stiff neck right now because of overworking from November, December time frame for my actual job. But yeah, I'm slowly getting back into it. I got a couple videos planned. But yeah, in this video, I want to quickly give my thoughts on the new handheld on the block which is this thing the msi claw now this thing was revealed on ces and i kind of want to give my thoughts on it because i think it's a very interesting um very interesting uh pc handheld in this space and that's because it runs on intel um not amd so we'll go through that um and I'll give my thoughts now before i begin uh, i do want to say i do like msi products a lot uh, a, a lot of the products that I bought from MSI stuff like monitors, GPUs, motherboards, you know, the PC space, I've literally had almost no issues pra or practically no issues with any of their products so far. So I know people don't like specific manufacturers. I know MSI is one of them, especially from some of their controversy from last year. But overall, I do have faith in MSI of getting this product out the door, at least for right now and being a somewhat successful with this product. But yeah, let's get into this. So as I said before, this thing runs on Intel Ultra, uh, on Intel Ultra, which is their Meteor Lake. Um, now from the, I have the website pulled up here, as you can see, as you can see, it literally looks like a ROG Ally. It literally looks like they just took a, a ROG Ally CAD model and just like make tweaks to make sure they don't get plagiarized. But yeah, um, it even has the seven inch, a seven inch 120 Hertz IPS variable refresh rate display basically the exact same panel that the ROG Ally has. It looks almost exactly like the ROG Ally, but there are some key differences that I think will make this more unique and at least I think makes me very interested outside of just, you know, the Intel. So first of all, the the um, ergonomics here, they apparently are much more comfortable than the ROG Ally, so I'm interested on that. I won't go too in-depth on that. MSI Center, let's see here. I mean, MSI Center, if it's just like Armory Crate, then whoop de doo I still think Steam OS and what Steam has done, what Valve has done for Steam OS is much better in than what this is. But since this is a Windows handheld, it's something that you have to deal with. Um, I'm really hoping that more developers actually stick it up and actually support Steam OS because I feel like Windows on its own is just not a great uh, operating system for a PC handheld. I think SteamOS has way more flexibility and way more ease of use for that specific matter. But for what these companies are trying to do, I will see how MSI Center is. Hopefully it's not a buggy piece of mess like the Armory Crit was at launch, but yeah. All right, let's get into this, the Intel Core um, architecture. So we can see here six P cores, eight E cores, two low power cores. This thing has a lot of cores. Um, you can see here that it's only 6P cores. That's actually less than the Z1 Extreme that the ROG Ally has, but at least it has a bunch more cores outside of just P cores. The Z1 Extreme is an 8-core CPU, which are just 8P cores. This has a bunch of extra stuff, including low power cores. I'm very curious to seeing how the like older and less um, power-hungry games, like um, stuff like Celeste or like Stardew Valley, run on this thing because it, I, I can see them running if they run well on these really efficient cores and if the battery life is, is really good on them then I can see this thing really killing it in the battery life department and we'll get into battery in a second um dual chamber design dual um not dual chamber dual um dual fan design obviously 53 watt out of battery this is a pretty big one because this is technically the highest battery out of all the major like um like well-known um, companies. I'm not talking about like iNeo or any, or like GPD, um, Asus, Lenovo, MSI, and Valve. And all those four, um, stuff that you can readily buy. This, this MSI Claw technically has the largest battery life, but we do need to keep in mind that I think based on charts, the Intel like CPU inside has a 15 watt minimum. And that's something to keep in mind because Technically, AMDs like the ROG Ally can go down to 10 watts, and even the Steam Deck can go down to like 5 watt, uh, 5 to 9 watts. So seeing this is technically gets canceled out by the higher 
consumption power of the Intel 7 on paper, but we'll see how it is. If it's actually 50% longer compared to the market average, that's huge, especially for indie titles or anything like that. If you can last like five, six, seven hours, that's something massive. So we'll see how that goes. Oh yeah, this uh, this is also something big too. Hall effect uh, triggers and joysticks. Um, all the other, mostly all the, um, the, you know, the ROG Ally, the Legion Go and the Steam Deck don't have Hall effect joysticks. Hall Effect joysticks basically um, use magnetic, um, I, I think it's magnetic um, detection to basically detect the motion of the joysticks, which dramatically reduces the possibility of stick drift, which is great for longevity. So the fact that MSI has these built in is great, whereas in those other companies, you would have to buy some extra, um, you have to make DIY it yourself and the triggers too, which is really nice. So that's a nice bonus. Um, Thunderbolt 4, that's also big. I think this is the only system, the first system to come with Thunderbolt 4, if I'm not mistaken. Micro SD card, lead. oh no. Oh no. The SD card lead reader is right above the fan. Oh no, that's not good. Uh, if you guys didn't know, the micro SD card reader on the ROG Ally, the, big, the, reason why, the big reason why that specific component fails a lot on the ROG Ally, on the ally at least from what people are speculating based on analysis is because it's inherently very close to the the, the cooling system of the rog ally so like basically it's getting the blunt force of all the heat um, that's being built up and pushed out the system so if this thing based on what i'm seeing here if the micro sd card reader is right here that's where the fan is so if that's good that is so if that's uh something it's very possible. I can see this thing also suffering an SD card issue too. Oh, that's not good. Um, I guess, <laughs> oh boy, okay. that's not something, that's something I'm very concerned about. So we'll see how it goes. All right, um, that's basically m most of all the features that they advertise here. Let me go over some of the specs here. Like I said, Intel Art Graphics um, LPDDR5. Now, it was rumored that this thing would have 32 gigs of memory, but it actually comes with 16. That's what MSI confirmed, which sucks. 32 gigabytes would have been such a game changer for these PC handhelds because the RAM has to be shared between the CPU and GPU. For me, at least, I prioritize making sure that the game runs as best as it can. And the problem is that even at the lowest settings, these games are demanding so much VRAM or so much system memory that it's hard to balance the two. Um, between the CPU and the GPU when you only have 16 gigs. Um, IO ports, Thunderbolt, we said Hall Effects, fingerprint, uh, fingerprint scanner, 65 watt power, um, power delivery adapter, basically the essentials, so yeah. Um, am I going to buy this? I've been heavily considering it. It's I think it's $700 for the 512 gig model. I may get that. Um, I the, If you guys didn't know, uh, I never actually told you guys, I gave the ROG Alley to my brother and it's in college. It's at his dorm in college right now. Um, I really just haven't been using it. Um, but I am curious about using this and testing it because I am curious on seeing how Intel's first real a, you know, PC handheld attempt is going to go, or at least how well their CPUs will be in the PC handheld space, which has been booming and been very lucrative. So yeah, very interesting to see how this goes. I feel like these Windows PCs, um, although they do compete with Valve in terms of like, you know, the space, I feel like their strengths are very separate from the Steam Deck because the Steam Deck can't play, for example, Xbox Game Plus games locally. That's a very big thing. Unless you want to go through, you know, uh, dual booting or installing Windows, which at that point, you're just using a Windows handheld at that point. And at that point, I'd rather just get any of the other options. So yeah, like stuff like Xbox Game Pass games or, for example, games like multiplayer, like Call of Duty, Destiny, any of those anti-cheat games, um, those are what these handhelds are for. And I feel like the MSI Claw is not really, I think what it's going to stand out is, is very different from the Steam Deck, in my personal opinion. Very interested in seeing how this handheld will come out and... Yeah, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and end the video there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Just wanted to give my thoughts on this because it's something that I'm quite interested in maybe purchasing, but I'm not sure. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and I'll see you guys in the next one. I'll talk to you later.